Hey guys, Seth Rogen here for PhoneDog.com. Actually, I'm not Seth Rogen. If I was Seth Rogen, I wouldn't be sat here in my office. I would be on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And I clearly am not. I wish I was, though. It's another episode of the Phone Dog Roundup, the weekly show where I round up all the most interesting and discussion-worthy topics from the entire Phone Dog media network. Let's get it started with LG, shall we? The LG G3 has had a few leaks over the past few weeks and today a newer one kind of leaked out and it's a good one because it shows the whole device in real clear imaging so we're left in no doubt what it's going to look like. And this comes after the news that LG announced that it will be having a special event on May 27th in various locations. The big question here obviously with the LG G3 is does it have what it takes to compete with the Galaxy S5 and the HTC One M8? And that leads us quite nicely on to the dogfight of the week. And everybody loves a dogfight. In fact, there's nothing better than a dogfight, except perhaps that lip-syncing battle between Jimmy Fallon and Emma Stone. That's probably the coolest thing that's ever been on the internet. Marco Hanna, our resident phone reviewer and video extraordinaire, pitted the two top Android phones against each other. I won't spoil it and tell you who won, but I will say that if you want a grippy phone, then clearly Samsung is the way to go. It's a heck of a lot more grippier than the HTC One M8. But at the same time, if you wanted something that answered and granted all your wishes at once, then this probably isn't the way to go. I guess you can't get all of your wishes at one time. Then of course, there's that waterproof flap at the bottom of the phone, which just so happens to be... Seriously, the ugliest flap I've ever seen. So in short, grippy, good, flappy, bad, and it's not a genie. Hey, what is up guys, I'm Kibishi. Hi-ho, Silver! Away! That would have been so much cooler if I had a mask. This is obviously the news that Google is probably going to retire the Nexus name, instead replacing it with the Silver Android Phone program which uses other manufacturers to create high-end Android devices offering an almost stock experience. That's kind of sad news really for me because I've been one of those people that have followed the Nexus brand since the day it, the Nexus One came out. It was one of the best phones ever. And then if we kind of, I guess we can sidestep the Galaxy Nexus and the Nexus S, because I don't think those were the two strongest, but the last few, the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 5, and the Nexus tablets are all fantastic, and it's got that strong brand name and a great image. And if you want stock Android and pure Google, that has always been the way to go. But instead, it looks like we're going to get these random devices with Powered by Google written on the back, similar to the way the T-Mobile G1 and the G2 were. And talking of T-Mobile, this week they announced their quarterly results in which they completely smoked the opposition. They added 2.4 million net subscribers, which is way more than all the other guys put together. In fact, they added more just branded postpaid net subscriptions than Verizon added of any subscriptions altogether. It was a great quarter. The first time they've gone over 2 million and it's the record for them and it's been fantastic. It just shows you that the early termination fee offer that they launched back in CES in January is clearly working and the other carriers are kind of scrambling to try and compete with that and not quite getting there. So we'll end this week's video with a couple of leaks. First up is the Amazon phone which everybody clearly sees the point in because who doesn't want an Amazon phone? Just because, you know, you can't just download Amazon books and stuff from other Android phones. Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD. And it's hard to see where this thing would fit in on the market, presumably on the low end scale and aimed at people who, I don't know, don't know any better. And we have also seen a good number of iPhone 6 leaks, including some 3D models and schematics and digital models and they all kind of look the same and they're all based on the schematics that were leaked about a month and a half ago. So what essentially is happening is people found these schematics and everybody's just 3D printing or creating models based on them. There's no way to tell whether these are genuine and part of me kind of hopes they're not. That's been it from me this week. I will catch you again next Monday with my usual Monday moan. Stay tuned to PhoneDog.com for all the coverage of the mobile phone stuffs. We do it all. It's great. I'm at PhoneDog underscore Cam on Twitter, and I'll see you again soon. 
They have either been 3D renders or schematics or the built motor type. Uh, hey, what is up, guys? I'm KBHD. Right. 